We are a day closer to Christ's return. I am so grateful. Got to read this to you before we, before we pray. Um, I'm aging. Don't mind. Don't mind me. Um, it wasn't long ago that I could read all my writing. I've got all kinds of statements written in here in small print. And now the day has come. This is from Great Controversy 519. Satan well knows that all whom he can lead to neglect prayer and the searching of the scriptures will be overcome by his attacks, unquote. So I think we better pray. Father, this is such a delight to have these moments in your word giving you the opportunity to speak to our hearts and do something for us that no human being in the universe can do. So we give you the right this morning through your Holy Spirit to work in us, to will and to do your good pleasure and continue your work of preparing us for eternity. And we thank you now in Jesus' name, amen. All right. Well, this is part five. I'm grateful for promises like this. Very, very grateful. With him, with Christ, there can be no such thing as failure, loss, impossibility, or defeat. Anybody want to say thank you, Lord? We can do all things through him who strengthens us. When temptations and trials come, do not wait to adjust all the difficulties, but look to Jesus, your helper. What part of our anatomy do we look to Jesus? <laughs> Thank you. Certainly, yeah. In our mind. Well, the reason I'm grateful for these type of promises is because of what's looming on the horizon for anyone who's serious about being ready for the, for the kingdom. Jeremiah 30, verse 7 says, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. I, I put the, highlighted the blue. Aren't you glad? Daniel 12, 1, And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was, since there was a nation even to the same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered. Again, I'm thankful for what's in the blue. Both promises, your people. I want to be one of his people. How about you? Because here's what's happening. This is what's coming up. The time of trouble, such as never was, is soon to open upon us. It is often the case that trouble is greater in anticipation than in reality. But this is not true of the crises before us. The most vivid presentation cannot reach the magnitude of the ordeal. In that time of trial, every soul must stand for himself before God. It's coming. So here's what God allows everyone to experience to actually give us the opportunity through his empowering grace, actually, and I hope you brought your Bibles, to actually face the horrendous trials that are yet to come for God's people. Uh, turn with me in your Bibles. I, I hope you don't mind me asking some questions this morning about this. I hope that you, you're, uh, um, I don't scare you enough that you're confident enough in me, at least in some way where you're willing to actually look for answers from the text that I share, the questions I ask this morning. Um, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 19. 1 Peter 4. What does God allow to actually give us the opportunity through His grace to actually cooperate with His Holy Spirit to prepare us for what lies ahead? 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 19. Notice what it says. Wherefore... Let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him 
in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. What jumps out at you in that verse? Suffering according to what? What? Suffering according to the will of God? Wow. James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. Why the suffering? James chapter 1. Keep your finger there, though, while you're there, and um, go to Philippians chapter 1 also. I'm so grateful for Ben Franklin's ingenuity. Philippians chapter 1, look at verse 29. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to what? For whose sake? Uh Uh-huh, yeah. James chapter 1. Of all the gifts that God can bestow upon men, suffering with Christ is the most weighty trust and highest honor. You remember that one? Um, Brother Eric shared that earlier in one of his presentations. This is amazing. Suffering for Christ. James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. My brothers, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. So when God allows trials, when I suffer according to the will of God, according to that verse, what am I to do? Count it all joy. I haven't arrived, but there it is. Count it all joy. You know there's a purpose for that. We'll be looking at that for sure. Count it all joy. What is the purpose for the diverse temptations, according to these verses, what is the purpose for the diverse temptations that God actually allows me to experience? Look closely at the verse. I want you to find the answer from the verses. Yes, your answer is right, brother. So we'll turn to God. No doubt about it. Nowhere else to turn. But according to the verses, um, what's God doing with the trials? Tell me the words from the verse. And when you find the answer from those verses, um, shout it out loud so everybody else can see what you've discovered. The trying of your faith. And what does trying of my faith work? Produce patience. Now, let me ask you a question. I don't know about you, but I have need of patience. How about that? Hebrews 10, 36, you have need of patience, brethren, that after you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Patience. According to that, according to these verses, look closely at James chapter 1 again. We want to do some thinking this morning. I'm not going to just stand here and talk to you. According to those verses, what is produced by the trials, the trying of my faith, it's working patience, and what is the patience working for me? I heard it. That you may be what? Wow! Wanting how much? I like the idea of not wanting anything. Have you ever in your entire life experienced a time when you didn't want something? 